good evening as friends i hope my voice is audible to you right from today we are starting indian economy indian economy is one of the important and uh, most of the aspirants feel which is which is tough for uh, upsc examination normally and very important for uh, many state survey examinations also so we'll try to understand the syllabus of indian economy we'll initially start with uh, one hour classes for one two days from next week onwards we'll again escalate to two hour classes and try to wind up the syllabus in 60 70 hours so it is important that i'm giving you few instructions remember those few instructions first thing it doesn't matter to me what economy have until it is important to upsc syllabus first you should understand the syllabus then you should focus on the pyqs nothing beyond you should focus on this particular discipline very narrowly unlike if you try to read everything and anything it is wide and very very big so indian economy will try to cover the syllabus first what is the expectation for upsc preliminary examination and in the mains examination what is the expectation we will try to see that first then we'll go forward so if you see the preliminary examination for preliminary examination upsc prelims syllabus is not well defined this is very vague for preliminary examination the syllabus is very vague but when you see the preliminary examination previous year questions you will understand the limits and boundaries of this particular subject keep that in mind what was given in syllabus is this one this one line this particular letter this particular word this particular one and this one so for preliminary examination what was given economic growth and development this is not given exactly this what we are trying to broaden poverty is given inclusion is given democracy demographics is given fiscal policy is given so fiscal policy we have covered widely in budget series just before this so this is the syllabus given for preliminary examination again try to see the syllabus because we are going to see the 2022 paper and understand where the questions are falling in first one economic growth and development poverty inclusion especially financial inclusion demographics fiscal policy this is what the syllabus is given if you see the questions i hope this is visible for you i hope this is visible for you the letters are little small so the first question you don't have to answer anything now you just see the question and which part of the syllabus it is falling under and try to understand the way they are asking questions rapid financing instrument and rapid credit facility are related to the provisions of lending by which of the following institutions so one of the credit window from external sector the question is falling whether it is asian development bank whether it is imf whether it is unep or world bank so it is talking about one particular financing window normally in fiscal policy also we will try to see that with reference to indian economy consider the following statements the increase in nominal effective exchange rate near so it is talking about exchange rate 
it is talking about the valuation of the currency near rear an increase in trend of domestic inflation relative inflation in other countries is likely to cause increasing divergence between near and rear so the fo focus is on exchange systems in external sector how are the exchange systems how is indian currency standing against the other currencies this is another important parameter in budget also i spoke about it a little current account deficit and its relationship with the currency exchange systems next one with reference to indian economy consider the following statements very basic question if the inflation is too high rbi is likely to buy government securities if the rupee is rapidly depreciating rbi is likely to sell the dollars in the market if interest rates in the usa or european union were to fall that is likely to induce rbi to buy dollars if you see the questions you don't see any static part of the syllabus these are all dynamic we would have used that particular facility then we spoke about near and rear in economic survey and budget clearly and this is the duty of central institutions rbi right monetary policy right three points about the role of rbi and finances so we can see first one second one third one all are about money if we can focusedly see all the three are about supply of money so second one exchange rate about the currency first one lending window money currency this one inflation and control price money especially financial systems systems financial systems this is what normally a student leave in their day to day current affairs these are not what they re read this is what they leave next one g20 framework g20 common framework consider the following so g20 another economical institution g20 is very much in use nowadays in india especially in current affairs also we must have read at least 30 40 times in this particular year only again with reference to indian economy what are advantages of inflation indexed bonds money again money finance financial systems so let us not get into the deeper aspects we have identified a little pulse about this particular trend so we can see if you understand how money works in indian economy how the indian economy how money is working with monetary policy fiscal policy and other external environments you would be able to answer these questions with reference to foreign owned e-commerce firms operating in india which of the following are right e-commerce firms they can sell their own goods in addition to the offering of their platforms as marketplaces the degree to which they can own big sellers on their platforms is limited how far the doors are opened for them e-commerce firms where we are focusing where we focused in budget also last year budget next one which of the following activities constitute real sector in economy so we will do the sectoral categorization and understand normally the subject so farmers harvesting their crops textile mills converting raw cotton into fabrics a commercial bank lending money into a trading company 
a corporate body issuing rupee denominated bonds over 6. Again, the question is on financial activity only, even though the previous question is also on financial activity, e-commerce forms. Which of the following situations best reflects indirect transfers often talked about media recently with reference to India? An Indian company investing in a foreign enterprise and paying taxes to the foreign country on the profits arising out of the investment. So you can see more or less financial relationship with other countries. With reference to the expenditure made by an organization or a company, which of the following statements is correct? In budgeting chapter, you will understand these things. Budget means fiscal policy, financial policy. Next one. With reference to Indian economy, consider the following statement. A share of household financial savings goes towards government borrowings. Again, finance. So if you take money, financial sector, let it be monetary policy, let it be financial policy. Until now, we saw at least 10 questions in Indian economy about the instruments, about the windows we borrow, about the ways we do business, about the ways the government control. With reference to Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, one scheme, one mission program, which is part of government policy, fiscal policy. Consider the following statements. Tight monetary policy of US Federal Reserve could lead to capital flight. Yes or no, those students who attended budget classes. Yes, sir. Yes or no? The question is tight monetary policy of US Federal Reserve could lead to capital flight, capital inflow, capital outflow. In macroeconomic framework statement, it is clearly mentioned again about capital and money. Consider the following statements. India credit rating agencies are regulated by RBI. The rating agency popularly known as ICRA is a public limited company. Brickwork rating C is an Indian credit rating agency credit rating agencies and the evolution of these agencies nowadays, dynamic question, again about finance. How do a credit rating agency comes into picture? When I have to lend to someone, he should have good credit score. So these are where the institutions will come. Let it be the individual, let it be the private company, let it be the government institution, everyone will have credit, everyone we will have to be uh, subjected to these credit rating agencies. For example, if you talk about uh, India's rating, Moody is there, Moody will come and give the rating, Standard and Charter, like there are many other rating agencies which will give rating, based on that we will lend money. If the rating is poor, the interest rate would be more, if the rating is good, the interest rate would be normally less. So likewise, next one, with reference to banks, board, bureau, which of the following statements, I don't want to discuss anything, bank, board, bank, finance, again, convertible bonds, bonds, securities, Again, in India, which one of the following responsible for maintaining price stability? Again, price 
money. Non fungible, non NFTs, NFTs, non, -fung non fungible tokens, cryptocurrencies, we are entering into metaverse, the new currency of the new generation. Again, in India, which of the following compiles information of industrial disputes, closures, retrenchments, and layoffs? One regulatory question. So if you can see directly, indirectly, what is playing role? Financial sector, finances. Majorly the questions are from finance. Majorly the questions are about money. Majorly the questions are about instruments, institutions and agencies. If you are not aware of, for example, all of you are aware of RBI. It's a central bank. Likewise, you should not leave the syllabus of banking. You should not leave the syllabus of security markets. You should not leave the syllabus of insurance institutions and international financial institutions. Let it be IMF, World Bank, ADB, AIB, JICA, any other institutions. Majorly, the preliminary questions are falling in this particular area. Financial instruments, finances, money management is where more questions are coming. Yes, for sure you need to read fiscal policy and monetary policy. What is not there in this? If you can see for preliminary examination, there is no agriculture part, there is no industry part, there is no service sector this broad syllabus is not there for preliminary examination. Most important part is to understand how people take money, give money, earn money, spend money, save money, invest money. How depth the financial markets are, more the instruments are, more the depth ma the market is. More instruments are coming into picture, more the depth of the market is. An ideal student will leave all these current affairs from newspaper. For my, from my experience, I can see, understand. The moment you see any regulatory institution, the moment you see any financial instrument, you will leave it. You will not try to understand it. That is where you will fail in the preliminary examination. So you need to understand about this. And no question is static question here. No one is asking you a question, what is your central bank? Who is releasing your fiscal policy? Who is releasing your monetary policy? No such questions will be asked in the preliminary examination for sure. Are able to understand? Non-fungible tokens asked now before cryptocurrencies asked. Whatever is happening in this particular cyber world, any new tokens, let it be digital currency of RBI, it will be important. Whatever RBI is doing, every activity of RBI is important. And the regulators of security markets is important. So focus on the business space and try to understand the instruments rather than institutions, private institutions or other institutions, right? Coming back. So don't worry about the answers. That is about preliminary examination. Preliminary examination is more about finances. To that also, we need to understand indicators. In this perspective, let us go back to the syllabus again. Economy, growth, and development. For the growth of economy and development, what are the different indicators? How do we understand these indicators? So if you are reading any particular chapter in economy, growth and development, not always expect a question from that. But a question like uh, what are the different ways the growth is being affected directly or indirectly will be important for you. Poverty. So have you seen any question on poverty now? You didn't see. Inclusion. No such. Demographics, 
no such fiscal policy a major one. So that is where you need to come up with a broad understanding for preliminary examination in the financial instruments whereas the mains examination the syllabus is here. Mains examination syllabus is clear, mains examination syllabus is broad, they have mentioned it clearly. Indian economy and issues relating to planning, mobilization of resources, development and growth, employment. So apart from planning which is uh, dealt by Niti Ayo, mostly from budget. Inclusive growth and again budgeting. This comes agriculture, major cropping patterns, e-technology for direct indirect farm subsidies, this one. Till here it is agriculture. Agriculture is major part of main syllabus. All this is agriculture. Why so much of agriculture? Agriculture is prime moving force in India now. Agriculture sector is a sector where more employees are dependent. If you leave that effects of liberalization, infrastructure and investment models, this is what the syllabus is for mains examination. If you can see the questions for mains examination, why, you mo why most of the students fail is not because of not reading because of not reading the syllabus and preparing the syllabus, prepare according to the syllabus, especially in economy. Why is public private partnership required in infrastructural projects? The last part of the syllabus, investment models came up directly in the question. Quite predicted, expected. Is inclusive growth possible? Inclusive growth, the question is falling directly. What are the major challenges of PDS, public distribution system? It would be in syllabus directly. PDS, the question is from syllabus directly, public distribution system. Elaborate the scope and significance of food processing industry in India, you can see the syllabus directly again. So here is the PDS, then you can talk about food processing directly from the syllabus. It is not vague at all, once you go through prelim syllabus, mains is quite predicted. Next one. Economic growth in the recent past has been led with the increase of labor activity. Explain this statement, suggest the growth pattern that led creation of more jobs without companies labor, productivity, employment and growth, unemployment, employment, growth. Do you think India will meet 50 percent of its energy needs for renewable energy by 2030? Justify your answer. How to shift of subsidies from fossil fuels to renewables? This one. What are the main bottlenecks in upstream and downstream process of marketing of agricultural products? Agriculture again, integrated farming. One, agriculture. Two, agriculture. Three, I consider it as agriculture. Four, dependent on agriculture. Right. So if you can see four questions out of eight is agriculture, let us consider 50 percentage, normally it would be more than that from agriculture. And from infrastructure, one, one question from infrastructure, right. So likewise, you need to understand the main syllabus is quite predictable. Once you have set of questions to do, you will be able to do that. What is difficult is only preliminary examination. Only in the preliminary examination you have constraints especially with the syllabus, understanding the syllabus. So I have explained 2022 paper, now open 2021, 2020, 
2019-2018 papers, nothing more than that. Just open these papers and understand is there anything more than financial instruments and finances the preliminary paper is asking about. And see the main paper, see whether anything is missing from the syllabus. You will come to conclusion that economy main syllabus is quite clear and the prelim syllabus is little vague and the major focus is on financials and instruments. I hope I gave you a clarity about that. So now I am talking about Indian economy, economics, then I will go to economy, then I will tell you economy, Indian economy. I will tell you the basics of this and we will get into the subject directly. And we will focus on those chapters where the questions are asked more for preliminary examination. Then we can focus for the mains part. But understand both are two different parts, not synchronous parts at least. If you read for prelims, it is not like you read for mains. Your main syllabus is different and prelim syllabus is different. The overlapping areas is very less. So first one, what is the defi definition of economics? If you try to take the definition of economics, there is no comprehensive clear cut definition for economics because different scientists, economists gave different definitions. Anyway, we do not want those technical definitions economic student read. We do not want that jargon led definitions the technical students read. We are just an aspirant, we are trying to understand the basics of the subject, go through, get selected and leave the subject. We are not here to do the PhD. So let us go for the basic definition which we have read in our childhood. NCRTs. Economics is the study of how societies use scarce resources to produce valuable commodities and distribute them among the different people. If I have to cut short it, how the societies use scarce resources. We know that resources are scarce. Resources are scarce. What are the different resources we have? We have natural resources, artificial man-made resources and human resources. All the three resources we have. So these three resources, if we administer them, that will become polity. Administering of resources is becoming polity. Efficient utilization of resources is becoming economy. Economy is all about efficiency. Economy is the subject not only for your exams, but also for your life. How will you succeed with the less resources you have is economy. Try to be economical. Able to understand? Economics is the study of how the societies use scarce resources and produce valuable commodities and distribute among them. So how will you make a scarce resource useful and how to bring value to that particular good, right? So how you are taking decisions is important. As per the definition, you can see goods are scarce and that society must use them with efficiency. Resources should be used with efficiency, maximum utilization. Initially, we used to focus in this particular definition, if you can see that evolution, we used to reuse the resources at the maximum before, maximum utilization of resources. Then came optimum utilization of resources. Then now we are in minimum utilization of resources. That is sustainable development. Now the focus is on sustainable development. At the introduction level, you understand this definition to this particular context. So the truth is scarcity. Why it is scarce? We have needs and wants. How many wants we have? 
let me ask you a question if lord shiva came in front of you and asked what do you want and tells you you can ask any number of things what all you will ask you can ask any number of things so there will be unlimited wants isn't it our wants are unlimited needs are basic needs food shelter clothing enough wants our desire these are unlimited when you have unlimited wants and less resources you should know how to utilize them efficiently for that that is the subject all about that is the subject all about unlimited wants are there less resources are there we don't have the resources let us consider 140 crore population of the country and we don't have the resources to satisfy the wants of all 140 crore people in the country so that is where economy will come into picture how efficiently you will utilize that right that is the basic definition which we remember resources are scarce resources are not unlimited when unlimited wants are there with limited resources it is where you make choices you need to make choices when you need to make choices that is becoming economy again that is another definition for economics economics is all about choice making economy is all about choices the choices you make that is another definition which you can keep in mind that is where i have said here economic studies how individuals firms governments and other organization within our society make choices i will give you 1 lakh rupees what will you do with your 1 lakh rupees is your choice right you may save it you may invest it you may spend it for purchasing clothes or any other instrument so i hope you understood choices economy is all about choices made by the government made by the firms made by the households or individuals it is all about choice so likewise in evolution many definitions will come so you need to understand in the developed world economy this particular subject is read for making money for making money that is the reason why preliminary examination is full of questions based on money and finances if you go to developing countries people read this subject majorly for upsc for apsc for clearing competitive exams and uh, other other people will read this subject to understand the patterns patterns of poverty unemployment trends like e-commerce prices banking all this they will make research topics and read them so you know the definition is clear one is resources utilization of resources when utilization is coming into picture you need to make choices based on your choice the efficiency will be as i said there is no limit for human wants we need infinite resources to gratify our needs which is not possible which is why we can say resources are limited how will we try to satisfy the competing needs and fulfill our, with our limited resources this subject is all about that this subject is all about making choices and making priorities making choices and making priorities so economy is all about prioritized choices that is what you can understand in simple the definition of indian economy not economy economics now try to see the syllabus again after the definition try to visualize the syllabus economic growth and development how will you utilize the resources you have and bring growth and development 
poverty when the resources were distributed discriminately resources should be dis uh, distributed indiscriminately when resources are distributed discriminately there will be poverty in unequal distribution of resources poverty a symptom based on the resource we don't see this part of resources but remember the thing which is not visible is resources the focus is on resources inclusion including those people who are not part of access to resources bring access to resources for example financial inclusion if i say if i say financial inclusion bringing that rural person and giving him access to a bank account or a insurance product then it is becoming financial inclusion access to resources access to resources should be there for everyone in the country then that will become inclusion and when the growth is led by everyone in the country when everyone is contributing to the growth that is becoming inclusive growth unlike that if only 1 lakh people are contributing to growth and all others are not part of the access to resources that is called inequality next one demographics demographics description of population when you try to describe population what you are trying to understand is human resource is it not human resource it's human resource we started considering human beings as resources from 1990s then comes fiscal policy financial resources financial resources but we keep financial resource as priority for our preliminary examination because all the resource are tied to financial resource now if you have financial resource you have access to natural resource if you have financial resource you have access to man made resource if you have financial resource you have access to human resource i can employ anyone if i have the capital i can buy natural resources if i have the capital i can manufacture products if i have the capital financial resources will become the central part of this particular syllabus because it is where the central energy is emanating to other resources able to understand let us consider you have no money do you have access to natural resources artificial resources human resources no consider you have money let us consider you have 10 lakh rupees you have access to natural resources you have access to artificial resources you have access to human resources so financial resource is the pivotal parameter which we need to keep in mind so how finances work in the modern world those people who have the currency who have the liquid those are the people who have access to the resources so we focus on these instruments understanding syllabus is greater part main syllabus indian economy and issues relating to planning planning of what planning of natural resources artificial resources and human resources i have a plan for example budget is also plan small plan it's not a five year plan in budget what i do i will plan this is going to be my revenue i will plan that this is going to be my expenditure resource planning again able to see this mobilization of resources development growth employment employment again related to human resources inclusive growth budgeting agriculture when we talk about demographics how do people live food food security nutritional security so we want this to be strong whatever it may so this one land reforms is required 
for equal distribution of resources. Liberalization is access to resources to the world of India and to India of the world. Similarly, infrastructure will make uh, rural resources accessible to urban people, urban resources accessible to rural people. Just an example, there can be many other things. Infrastructure, try to understand in the resource mode. Shift yourself to resource mode. And then investment models, how do you bring good output with efficiency by partnering with private people or any other model which we have. So this is all about resources. This is what I would like to tell. This is what the spirit of the syllabus. Let us you can see the spirit of the syllabus. So we can conclude that our layman definition is either prioritized choices, layman definition where everyone can understand this definition or how we efficiently utilize scarce resources. And uh, this discipline is very dynamic in nature. Why it is very dynamic? The way we use that resource will change according to time and space. Making choices, I said resources, what we need to do efficiently utilize. When you have to efficiently utilize, you need to make choice. Choice making is art or science? Both art and science. So I hope you know Satya Nadella. I hope you know Sundar Pichai. Why I am telling about these two people or any other CEO of world institutions? These are normal students from India. How come they became big CEOs of those companies? They have utilized the resources efficiently. Maximum utilization of available resources. When the Sundar Pichai is traveling to United States of America, he spent at least five to six years of his father's salary as a ticket for travel to United States of America. They understood this resource has to be utilized to this part to reach there. So you need to understand when you utilize the resources you have efficiently, you will obviously have the better outcomes. The same with the economy also, broader economy also. So as I said, this is both art and science. The way you make choice, there is a complete science by, behind it. The way you make a choice, there is complete art behind it. So why have you made the choice to become UPSC aspirant now or officer later? Because you made a choice. What made you to make the choice? There would be an underlining factor, power, income security, job security, something like that. So if you utilize the resources you have efficiently, what are the resources you have? The first resource you have is time. If you can utilize that resource efficiently and uh, use the available resources, academic resources, then you will get selection. If you are not utilizing them efficiently, you will not get selection. The same way here, our choices, normally if you compare our choices, a choice and another choice, there will be worse choice, there will be better choice, right? It's very dynamic. It changes from people to people. When we talk about that, from people to people, these choices will change because we are human beings. Human beings have what? What do human beings have? Brains. When human beings have brains, they think differently they make choices based on their social conditions, right? When they make choices, the results are different. Different the choices, different the outcome is.
So as I said, if you read about the political activity of a person, then it is about political science. When we read about administrative activity, this is public administration. When we read about the activities of society, that is becoming sociology. When we read about economical activity of a human being, it is becoming economics. The study of economical activities of human beings is economics. So that is why it is becoming humanities. Why we are calling it as humanities? Because it changes from human being to human being. When it is changing from human being to human being, the subject is quite dynamic. I will try to tell you a couple of examples here. Few people save, few people spend money. Few people invest, few people spend wasteful expenditure from the same middle class maybe. The reason why is it is their perception of life. If you understand LPG, liberalization, privatization, globalization which you have read, which came in 1991, this LPG policy or if you see that in 1985 the principles of capitalism were implemented in China. China was very successful. The same market socialism principles were implemented in Russia. Russia disintegrated, failed to the core. USSR became Russia. It is the same principle, but in China it is quite successful. And in United USSR it is a failure. And if you take LPG, we call it as Washington Consensus prescription be given by IMF and World Bank. This is successful in India, but utter disaster in South America. So it is the same principle. It depends upon how human beings make choices, how the societies make choices. This subject is all about that, choices. There will be opportunity cost all the time. When you are not making the right choice, there will be opportunity cost. So this is where we will wind up today's introduction class. I hope you understood the basic definition of Indian economy. It is not Indian economy, we read, we read economics. And when we read this, do not expect me to teach what is there in your textbooks or what other institutes are teaching. What we teach is to the syllabus given in the UPSC examination. The focus would be on syllabus and the choice P by, P, P by Q's previous year questions. Understand the money wisely. This will become awareness session for your physical health also. If you can understand this, most of the students I see, I have taught to many students. Many students pass the examination, but later they fail with their economics. They are in life. They do not know how to manage money. So it is also important to manage one of the important resource, which is financial resources. If your fiscal health is good, all other parts will follow in the present modern materialistic world. So, it will serve a dual purpose. One fiscal awareness, the second one is your examination. For preliminary examination from tomorrow onwards, make sure that you read all those institutions which deal with finances. You read all those instruments which deal with money. You read all those instruments which read with finances. How finances are impacting. So this is what we need. So we will start slowly. In couple of classes, we will learn we will take up a different topic. We may start with banking, money and we will launch our subject prelims focus initially for 10-15 days after which we will focus on the main syllabus. I hope I have explained the strategy how we are going forward. As usual whatever we have discussed here 
the PPTs and the PDFs will be dropped in the same class, in the same batch. So I hope you don't have any doubts. Thank you very much. We'll try to see tomorrow, try to go back, understand the definitions, and as I have given the work, go back, see the 21, 20, 19, 18 mains and prelims question papers, understand whether I am right or wrong in my perception about prelims. Thank you very much. We'll see tomorrow.